MBK 2 14 Yudhishthira will be captured chapter 14 Yudhishthira will be captured again the armies collided on the field of Kurukshetra for the 11th day of battle Karna coming fresh into the fight carved a path of destruction through the Pandava forces the Kaurava soldiers were delighted as they witnessed him causing havoc among their foes surely the Pandavas will soon flee here is Karna, capable of crushing the celestial armies Bhishma has treated Kunti's sons with tenderness, but Karna will not spare them, the din of battle resounded for miles, sending animals in distant forests bounding away in fear. Billowing clouds of dust, like heaps of tawny silk, rose up and obscured the sun. Weapons fell in thick showers on both armies, and the terrifying slaughter began once again Drona charged headlong into the Pandava army. He fired thousands of razor-sharp arrows that tore apart the warriors who stood before him. The fighters fell like rows of cranes before a gale. Invoking celestial weapons, Drona destroyed his enemies as Indra destroys the Asuras. The Pandava army quaked before Drona as he ranged about like Yamaraja holding his death-dealing staff Yudhishthira, alarmed at the destruction of his forces, spoke to Drishtadyuna. Check Drona's onslaught. No time should be lost with a roar, Drishtad Yuna charged drone up, followed by Bhima, the twins, Abhimanyu, and other warriors. They surrounded Drona and rained their arrows on his chariot Drona's eyes rolled in anger. Working his bow with blinding speed, he repulsed his attackers like a storm blowing off clouds. He sent men and chariots reeling across the battlefield in all directions. Like one insane, he roamed the field releasing fire-like weapons. Beholding Drona rushing upon them like an angered Yamaraja, the Pandava forces fled in confusion and terror. The terrific sound of Drona's bowstring was heard continuously. Just as Bhishma had done before him, he slaughtered the Pandava soldiers. At the same time, other great heroes among the Kauravas engaged with their counterparts. Many furious one-to-one -one battles took place between the leading warriors of both armies Drona, his mind fixed on his promise to Duryodhana, plowed relentlessly into the Pandava forces Yudhishthira was stationed in their midst, protected by many Maharathas who covered his chariot on all sides Arjuna was close by. Contending with a number of powerful chariot fighters who had been assigned the task of leading him away from his brother. As Drona burst through the ranks of soldiers in front of Yudhishthira, he was met by Kumara, a Panchala prince protecting Yudhishthira's chariot wheels. As Yudhishthira fired his long shafts at Drona, Kumara rushed toward him. The prince sent a volley of arrows at Drona that checked his progress. He pierced the Karu Perceptor with hundreds of shafts, laughing and roaring all the while. Not tolerating his attack, Drona regained his senses and fixed a broad-headed arrow onto his bow. Drawing it back to his ear, he fired it with deadly accuracy, severing Kumora's head from his body. Another Panchala prince, Simhasena, then struck Drona with a hundred ferocious arrows, supported by his brother, Vyagradatta, who came at Drona screaming out his fearful battle cry. They both pierced Drona's arms and chest with their steel shafts. Unperturbed, Drona sent two razor-headed arrows in swift succession that cut off their heads. As those handsome heads, decked with golden earrings and helmets, dropped to the earth, Drona pressed toward Yudhishthira. Seeing him approach the Pandava king, the Kaurava troops cried out, Yudhishthira is captured cries of distress went up from the Pandava army as Drona came ever closer to Yudhishthira. Hearing the shouts, however, Arjuna rushed toward Drona, mercilessly mowing down the warriors who stood in his way. All that could be seen of Arjuna or his chariot as he fought his way toward his brother was a constantly spreading network of arrows. Above that shower flew Hanuman roaring frightfully from the banner door Yodun ordered thousands of chariot fighters to charge Arjuna. Recklessly, they advanced toward him. The battlefield around Arjuna appeared to be one mass of arrows. Charging into the impenetrable wall of shafts, the Kauravas were cut down, their chariots smashed Drona found it impossible to approach Yudhishthira. His supporting divisions could do nothing to help him. They were being destroyed by the inflamed Arjuna. Those that were not killed turned and fled in fear. As Arjuna created a fearful destruction among the core of our army, the sun touched the western horizon Drona blew his conch to withdraw his troops. Gradually the two armies disengaged and returned to their camps, praising each other's heroism Drona was dejected as he took his place by Duryodhana's side in the tent. 
he had been helpless in the face of Arjuna's prowess. Shamed at his inability to contain his own disciple, he said to Duryodhan, I told you already that when Arjuna is by Yudhishthira's side, I will not be able to capture him. You must contrive some means to take Arjuna from his brother. I will then snatch Yudhishthira, even before the eyes of Drishtadyuna and all the other troops. I will either achieve this or slay at least one of the Pandava's greatest fighters, whoever comes to Yudhishthira's aid. However, you need to ensure that Arjuna is busy elsewhere on the field. Hearing Drona speak, Sasharma said, Arjuna has humiliated me many times. He bears malice toward me and my brothers. Remembering his antagonism, I can hardly sleep at night. Let us therefore undertake the task tomorrow of contending with him. With 50,000 chariot fighters who will not retreat behind us, we will challenge Arjuna to combat. Either he will lay prostrate on the field, or the earth will be relieved of the burden of my brothers and me and our entire army. Doryodhan praised Sasharma and a cheer went up from the other kings. With his four brothers, Sasharma took an oath before the sacred fire that he would fight to the death with Arjuna the following day. After Brahmins had sanctified his promise with mantras and holy water, he stood up and exclaimed, If we do not slay Arjuna or become slain by him, let us attain the regions reserved for those who kill Brahmins, for drunkards, for those who forsake one who has sought shelter, for those who have intercourse with another's wife, who are slayers of cattle, who abandon their own mother, or who are atheists. We claim those regions if we flee from Arjuna in battle tomorrow. Otherwise, may we attain the everlasting realms of happiness. After taking this vow, Sasharma and his brothers retired for the night, leaving Duryodhan enlivened and hopeful. Even if Sasharma could not kill Arjuna, which seemed likely, he would at least give Drona the freedom he needed to capture Yudhishthira. Duryodhan smiled at Karna. Perhaps he would not need to slay Arjuna after all. Between the promises of Drona and Sasharma, it seemed the war would end in another way. The Kaurava prince did not care. As long as he emerged victorious, by whatever means, that was all that mattered. He rose from his seat and swept out of the assembly with his head held high, Karna following, grasping the hilt of his broadsword early on the twelfth morning, news again reached Yudhishthira that Drona was intent on capturing him. He heard from his spies about Sasharma's promise. When Arjuna was informed, he said to his brother, Still you need not fear, O king. Here is Satyaki, my disciple and my equal in every respect. He will remain by your side at all times. Even if I am away, you cannot be captured while he is present. Reassured, Yudhishthira issued orders for the day's battle. His forces were soon moving toward the fight, causing the earth to vibrate and raising clouds of dust as they proceeded in the formation shaped like an alligator. As soon as Arjuna appeared before him, Sasharma, who stood ahead of the core of our army, challenged him. Bound by Kshatriya codes, Arjuna accepted the challenge and charged. He was immediately surrounded by the 30,000 chariots of the Samshapticus and Trigartas. As the rest of the Pandava forces moved on across the plain to engage with the other Kaurava troops, Arjuna began a furious battle with those fearless warriors. They let out deafening roars and hurled their weapons at him. Hearing their elated shouts, Arjuna said to Krishna, Just see, O son of Devaki, how these men, who are about to fall in battle, are transported with joy when really they should be weeping. Or perhaps they are happy as they see before them heaven's glowing regions, which can never be attained by cowards. Arjuna lifted his gold-encrusted celestial conch and let out a mighty blast. All four quarters were filled with the sound. Horses excreted and men fell from their chariots. Others were paralyzed with fear and stood motionless for a few moments. When the sound died away, they regained their senses and again roared. Taking up their bows, they fired thousands of shafts flanked with conca feathers. In an instant Arjuna had shot arrows to counter every one of his opponent's swift coursing shafts. They fell in pieces to the ground Arjuna pierced all the foremost charioteers who were bearing down upon him. Sasharma and his brothers responded with sharp pointed arrows that struck Arjuna's arms and chest. A huge shower of other steel arrows fell on Arjuna's chariot, like a swarm of black bees going toward a tree full of blossoms Krishna drove the chariot and baffled the enemy attack. As he emerged from the hail of shafts, Arjuna fired razor-headed arrows that cut down his foe's standards. With arrows shot in swift succession he slew the four horses of Santhuman, one of Sasharma's brothers, and then cut off his head. 
As the prince fell from his chariot, his four brothers increased the fury of their attack. Tens of thousands of other chariot fighters and horsemen hurled their weapons at him from all sides. At the same time, the Norayan army from Warakor rushed into the fight with terrible cries Arjuna was completely engaged in the battle as the rest of the Pandava forces met the Kauravas some distance away. With their forces arrayed in a formation resembling an eagle, the Kauravas closed on their enemies drone up, stationed at the head of the array, at once made for Yudhishthira Satya key charge drone up, releasing his swift arrows by the hundreds. He attacked the Kuru Perceptor and rendered his two charioteers unconscious with a volley of arrows. Piercing his horses with even more arrows, he brought Drona's chariot to a halt. Drona was filled with rage, and he gazed at his antagonist with bloodshot eyes. Considering that Satyaki's time had come, he shot a dozen snake-like shafts that sundered his bow and pierced his armor. Unperturbed, Satyaki grasped another bow and replied with thirty of his own arrows. They struck Drona and he spun round in his chariot and dropped his bow. Seeing the preceptor hard pressed by Satyaki, other Korava fighters came to his aid. At the same time, other Pandava warriors joined Satyaki and a fierce general fight followed Drona quickly regained his senses and fought on in total rage. Thousands of Panchala and Matsaya soldiers surrounded him and he killed them all, including the two powerful princes, Sutayajit and Satanika. Seeing his troops being mowed down, Drishtadyuna came forward with Shikandi. Along with Satyaki, Chekatana, and many other Pandava heroes, they managed to hold Rona in check. As that battle raged, the soldiers on both sides fell in waves. The battlefield was a morass of flesh and blood Rona fought like a man possessed. The Pandava army quaked in fear as he released his celestial weapons that slew them by the thousands Drona forced all his attackers to turn away from him in the fight. He could hardly be looked upon and the Pandavas surrounding him were routed. Duryodhan laughed and spoke to Karna, who was there at his side. Behold, Radha, how these troops flee from the battle. They seem to spin around and around as they look for a path by which to escape from Drona. I think they have lost all taste for battle. Surely they are seeing the world is being full of Drona. How will they return to the fight? What can even Bhima do against the warlike preceptor Karna was in a graver mood? That Pandava hero will never abandon the fight so long as life remains in him. Nor will his brothers turn away from battle at any time. Remembering the woes you inflicted upon them, they will rush against us again and again. Even now the mighty Bhima is coming forward. Doubtlessly he will slay our forces in vast numbers. See two house Atayaki and Drishtadyuna are rallying back to the fight, along with the twins and numerous other Maharathis among our foes. All of them are bearing down on Drona with a singleness of purpose. Let us prepare our forces without delay, Doryodhan looked across the field. He saw Bhima's chariot, drawn by its four red horses, racing toward Drona. Bhima was flanked by Drishtadyuna and Satyaki. The three warriors roared like lions as they approached the Karu commander. Behind them came a great wave of chariot fighters and horsemen, releasing showers of arrows as they charged Doryodhan broke from Karna and raced across the field, issuing orders for Drona's protection. A number of Korava heroes came between the Karu Perceptor and his assailants and soon the fight resumed with full force Doryodhan personally attacked Pima, his mind seized with anger. At the head of a massive elephant force, he challenged the Pandava with insulting words Bhima laughingly shot spiked arrows at the elephants. Drawing his great bow back to his ear he sent his shafts with such force that they felled the elephants one after another Bhima's chariot moved like the wind from side to side as he rained down his irresistible weapons. He dispersed his attackers like a tempest scattering clouds. The blood-soaked elephants, pierced all over, appeared beautiful, like dark clouds lit by the rays of the setting sun. Excited, Doryodhan approached Bhima and pierced him with a number of shafts. Bhima turned his blood red eyes toward the Korava and licked his lips. Instantly he shot dozens of gold-winged arrows, which pierced Doryodhan deeply. With a broad-headed shaft he brought down the black, gem-encrusted serpent banner that flew above Doryodhan's chariot. He then severed Doryodhan's bow with another shaft and sent up a roar. Seeing the Korava leader afflicted by Bhima, the barbarian king leading the elephant division came forward on his massive beast. Without delay Bhima struck the elephant between the eyes with a powerful shaft that stopped it in its tracks. With four more arrows he brought the elephant crashing to the ground. 
as it fell like a mountain struck by a thunderbolt, the barbarian chief tried to leap clear, but even as he jumped, Bima cut off his head with a razor-headed arrow fired with deadly accuracy. Seeing their leader slain, the other elephant warriors fled or Yodun tried to rally them, but without success. He moved away from Bima and saw Bagadatta coming up fast to assist him. The mighty fighter on his invincible elephant Supradak rushed toward Bima, seeming to fly over the battlefield. Bima fired his long shafts at the charging beast, but they fell harmlessly from its body. In a moment the elephant reached Bima's chariot and crushed it along with its horses as Bima threw himself clear. Supradak reared up again and again, screaming in fury and looking around for Bima. The Pandava ran beneath the beast and struck it with his bare arms. In pain the elephant whirled around like a potter's wheel. Bima came out from beneath it and the elephant seized him in its trunk. Bima spun round and freed himself from the twine of the trunk and again hid beneath the screaming beast that was endeavoring to kill him. Yudhishthira saw Bima and ordered a division of his own elephants to assist him. As Supradaka was diverted by the attack of enemy elephants, Bima saw his chance and he dashed away. A battle then ensued between Bhagavadatta and the Pandava forces mounted on elephants, led by the Dasharna king. They surrounded Bhagavadatta and covered him with volleys of arrows. Bhagavadatta fended off their shafts with his whirling hook. Goading Supradaka forward, he trampled and crushed the enemy forces like a storm crushing a forest. Chariots, horsemen and infantry were mangled as the great beast rampaged across the field. Impervious to its foe's weapons, the elephant caused chaos among the Pandava forces. Soldiers fled and their animals cried in terror. Rising above the sound were Supradaka's frightful screams as it thundered about the field unchecked. Some way off, Arjuna battled on alone against the Samshaptakas and the Norayan army. As he fought, he could hear Supradaka's screams. Recognizing the sound he said, O Madhusudana, it is clear that the Prajayatisha ruler is annihilating our army. I doubt if anyone can stop his elephant except us. What then is my duty, O Krishna? I think I should proceed at once to where Bhagavadatta is roaring out his battle cry. Dispatching him and his beast to death's abode, I will then return to this fight. Krishna agreed and urged Arjuna's horses toward the rest of the Pandava army. As they raced away, however, the Samshaptakas called out from behind, Why do you flee from the fight? Turn and face us again for you have not yet defeated us. Arjuna was caught in a dilemma. He wanted to save his army from Bhagavadatta, but he could not avoid the Samshaptakas. No Kshatriya worthy of the name could refuse a challenge. He told Krishna to stop the chariot and turn around. First he would wipe out the entire Samshaptaka force, then deal with Bhagavadatta. As Krishna wheeled the chariot around Arjuna still could not fix his mind. There were hundreds of thousands of warriors supporting Sasharma and his army. They were spread out over a large area and it would take hours to overcome them. By then, Bhagavadatta and his unstoppable elephant might have done untold damage. Suddenly the Samshaptakas launched a coordinated attack on Arjuna. Countless arrows descended upon his chariot, striking both him and Krishna. Krishna dropped the reins and fell back in a swoon as the barbed steel shafts covered him. The chariot stopped and vanished beneath the hail of arrows. Losing his patience, Arjuna decided to invoke the Brahmastra weapon. He fixed a golden arrow to his bow and chanted the sacred mantras to bring the awful weapon into being. With consummate skill he directed it at his foes, continuously firing long shafts imbued with the power of the Brahmastra. A solid wall of blazing arrows went toward the Samshaptakus. The warriors fell to earth with their heads, arms and legs severed. Chariots were smashed into fragments and elephants cut to pieces. Horses and riders fell dead by the thousands. The whole army appeared to be on fire, struck by the beautiful but deadly shafts shot by Arjuna's mystic powers. Krishna returned to his senses and said, Well done, poor thought. I think this feat of weaponry would have been hard for Indra, Kuvera, or even Yamaraja himself. Our enemies are routed. Those staying in the fight are being slain like insects entering a fire, Arjuna asked Krishna to go quickly to Bhagavadatta. He could return later to deal with the rest of the Samshaptakas and their supporting armies. As swift as the wind, the chariot flew over the battlefield and soon arrived where the battle with Bhagavadatta was taking place. Seeing Arjuna entering the fight, Doryodhan detailed a large force of chariot fighters to attack him. They rushed in a body toward Arjuna and rained their arrows, darts and lances upon him. 
Bearing the attack with fortitude, Arjuna continuously worked the Gandiva bow and sent whistling shafts at all the warriors who came at him. Fearless of their lives, the Kaurava troops charged at Arjuna with shouts and roars. The Pandava cut them down with his arrows as a farmer cuts a field of wheat. Seeing Arjuna annihilating the troops, Bhagavadatta raced toward him. He showered a downpour of arrows onto Arjuna's chariot and directed Supradika to trample him. Arjuna calmly resisted his attack with volleys of his own shafts, even as the shore resists the ocean. The two warriors hurtled about the field, locked in deadly combat. Bhagavadatta sent hundreds of arrows at both Arjuna and Krishna, but Kunti's son cut them down before they could reach him. Supradika charged at Arjuna like a mountain rocking across the field. Impervious to Arjuna's arrows the animal screamed in fury as it bore down on the golden chariot Krishna masterfully drove the horses and evaded the charge, fainting to the left of the beast. As he passed to Bhagavadatta's side, Arjuna saw his opportunity to slay the unprotected warrior and his animal, but remembering the rules of combat he desisted from the act. Seeing Arjuna's chariot slipping past, Bhagavadatta's elephant was overpowered by rage and ran pell-mell through the Pandava forces. Hundreds of chariots, with their warriors, horses and charioteers, were crushed and slaughtered Arjuna was infuriated by Bhagavadatta's remorseless attack. Moving quickly to the front he sped four arrows at him which cut apart his bow. With two more arrows he slew the two warriors who sat behind Bhagavadatta. The Prajayatisha monarch threw fourteen lances at Arjuna in quick succession. Those jewel-encrusted javelins, with shining steel points, blazed as they sped toward the Pandava. There were many small bells tinkling delightfully. Arjuna immediately shot arrows that cut each of the lances into three pieces. As the lances fell to the earth he fired another dozen shafts that broke Supradika's armor. It fell from the elephant's body in fragments like meteors falling from heaven. The dark beast then appeared like a mountain suddenly freed of its surrounding clouds Bhagavadatta hurled a long dart at Arjuna, its tip glowing red and emitting sparks as it flew Arjuna calmly cut it in two with a single razor-headed shaft. He then cut the king's white umbrella and tall standard. With a further ten shafts he pierced Bhagavadatta, who replied with two dozen long lances. One of the lances struck Arjuna's diadem and knocked it from his head. Replacing his diadem, Arjuna gazed at Bhagavadatta with steely eyes. He shouted out, Take a last look at this world, O king. Bhagavadatta quickly took up a new bow and covered Arjuna and Krishna with a shower of barbed arrows. Arjuna released a cluster of flat-headed shafts that cut his bow to pieces and pierced all his limbs. Taking up his golden hook, Bhagavadatta thought of the Vaishnava weapon, which was in his possession. Reciting the ancient aphorisms to invoke that irresistible weapon, he charged his elephant hook with its potency and hurled it at Arjuna. All the warriors witnessing the fight between Arjuna and Bhagavadatta gasped as they saw the missile, capable of killing all creatures, fly toward Arjuna. Suddenly Krishna stood up from his place on the chariot. Throwing out his arms he received the weapon full on the chest. As it struck him, it turned into a garland of celestial flowers and draped itself around his neck. Arjuna was mortified. Why had Krishna interfered? Keeping his eyes on Bhagavadatta, who had been stunned by Krishna's thwarting of the Vaishnava missile, he said, O Lotus Eyed One, your promise was that you would drive my horses and never enter the fight. Why have you interceded? I could understand you taking it upon yourself to protect me when I am incapable or about to fall, but here I stand with all my faculties and weapons. Not even the combined celestials and usuras could defeat me. How have you felt it necessary to act as you just did slowly circling the chariot around Bhagavadatta? Krishna replied, Here, O sinless one, the origin of the weapon that Bhagavadatta released for your destruction. Long ago, when I awoke from slumber in my form as Mahavishnu, the earth goddess came to me seeking a boon. Knowing that I was inclined to grant favors at that time, she said, Please bestow upon my son Naruka the Vaishnava weapon. Let it be that he cannot be slain by any being I replied, O oh goddess, it shall be so. Your son will be invincible, protected by my weapon. She then went away and her son received the weapon, which he later passed on to Bhagavadatta. This weapon can slay any being within the three worlds, including Indra and Rudra. Therefore, for your sake, O Arjuna, I baffled the missile. 
now you may slay your opponent, this implacable enemy of the gods by God. Even as in days gone by I slew Naruka in a great fight, understanding that Krishna had saved his life, Arjuna fixed his gaze on Bhagavata. He swiftly covered him with hundreds of straight flying shafts. As Bhagavata parried the attack, Arjuna took up a long golden lance. He drew it back in, invoking the power of Indra, hurled it with all his strength at Supratika. It went into the elephant's head right up to its golden wings. Supratika stopped in its tracks, its limbs paralyzed. Although goaded by Bhagavata, it slowly fell to the earth like an enormous hill uprooted by a thunderbolt. As his elephant screamed Bhagavata leapt from its back. Before Bhagavata reached the ground, Arjuna shot a crescent-headed shaft that tore open his breast and cut his heart in two. His bright turban fell from his head like a petal falling from a lotus whose stem has been violently struck. He dropped to the earth with his golden garland broken and scattered. His arms and legs spread akimbo, he appeared like a god fallen from heaven when his pious credits have expired or Juna circumambulated his foe in respect. Then, turning his chariot toward the core of our army, he rushed back into the battle Shakuni's two brothers then attacked Arjuna with mighty yells. They were backed by a thousand Gandhara horsemen. The warriors fell upon Arjuna, releasing hundreds of arrows. Unperturbed, Arjuna took up a couple of razor-headed shafts and beheaded both princes. The horrified Shakuni then charged at Arjuna. Invoking a mystical Yasura weapon, he spread a fearful illusion that covered the pond of uh, clubs, iron balls, rocks, darts, barbed shafts, bludgeons, swords, tridents, axes, and other weapons fell on Arjuna from all sides. Ferocious animals, burning with hunger, attacked Arjuna along with Rakshasas, carnivorous birds and demons. A thick gloom enveloped his chariot and harsh voices reproached him from out of the darkness Arjuna invoked the lustrous celestial weapon known as the Gatishka and the darkness dispelled. All his illusory assailants vanished, but huge waves of water then appeared and rushed toward him Arjuna quickly discharged the Aditya weapon to dry up the waters. Seeing his illusions nullified, Shakuni turned and took to his heels like a cowardly deserter Arjuna turned on the Gandhara forces and slaughtered them like a lion killing small animals. Other Korovan warriors charged into the fray and a general fight ensued between the two armies Yudhishthira remained near Arjuna, with Drishtaduna and Satyaki by his side. The Korova forces were broken and dispersed by Arjuna and Bhima, who fought together like a couple of enraged gods of Himanyu fought with Karna, keeping the powerful warrior engaged, while Drishtaduna directed his weapons at Drona. As the foremost fighters contended, Arjuna drove back Doryodhan's huge army with his hundreds of thousands of shafts Bhima spun around on foot, creating a carnage with his whirling mace Drona fought intensely, but he could not find any opportunity to seize Yudhishthira. He slew numerous powerful fighters and wrought a massive destruction among the soldiers, but the invincible Satyaki guarded Yudhishthira closely and, assisted by Drishtaduna and the Panchala forces, kept Drona at bay. As the sun reached the meridian, Drona, seeing the core of us getting the worst of the fight, decided to regroup. He sounded the retreat and recalled the vast army to the western side of the field, where they were encamped or Yodun was angry. O oh, Preceptor, why have you not fulfilled your vow? You did not capture Yudhishthira, and Arjuna ranges unchecked across the field. Are your words to prove false Drona felt his patience tried? It does not behoove you to address such harsh words to one who is always striving to serve you. I have told you many times that no one in the universe can conquer Arjuna. He has even held the three-eyed Mahadeva in battle. Now that Yudhishthira is aware of our aims, he is keeping himself well guarded. It will be difficult to capture him, but I will try my utmost. My word that I will kill one mighty hero will be kept. I will now form an array that even the gods could not penetrate. The remaining Sam Shapticus should again challenge Arjuna and take him to the southern side of the field. We will then try to trap Yudhishthira in, in so doing, we'll at least take the life of someone who comes to protect him, Drona gazed across at the pond of army. If one of their principal fighters could be killed, it would be a blow to their morale. He decided to form the core of us into the Chakra Vizuha, the circular array. That arrangement would likely result in one of the Pandava heroes being trapped, perhaps even Yudhishthira. Only Arjuna knew the secrets of that formation. No one else among the Pandavas could resist or break it. 
unless, that was, Arjuna had taught it to someone Dronub again giving the commands. He would soon find out.